The 2015 Paris Climate Change Conference, or COP21, was a global meeting of the world's leaders to discuss the issue of climate change. The largest meeting of its kind that the world has ever seen highlight the shared urgency and concern for taking climate action. The world has come to the realisation that this really is the last chance to get it right and there was immense pressure on the attendees of the conference to find solutions and to create a global legally binding agreement so we can all move forward together. And Anika and I had the extraordinary opportunity and privilege to be part of it. The delegates at the conference were made up of representatives from every sector, environmental, economic, health, education, cultural, even religious organisations were represented. This was the first time agriculture was openly invited and discussed at a COP conference. It was vitally important that farmers were there. Climate change is not just an environmental issue. You can't narrow it down to only affecting one sector. It's an issue that affects everyone and everywhere. We all need to acknowledge that while we are all part of the problem, we can also all be part of the solution. We have come to understand the interrelationships and connections between the different sectors, and as such, the importance of working together to tackle climate change effectively. The solutions are going to be discovered by acknowledging this interconnectedness, so we can tackle these issues in a manner that meets the needs of all, industry, community, and government. Farmers are at the coalface of a changing climate. The environment in which we live and work is changing, and so must we. Farmers are definitely going to be part of the solutions in climate change and the successes moving forward. So you might ask, why us? Why Anika Molesworth and Joshua Gilbert? Why send two young Australian farmers to Paris? Simply because we were the right people to go. My family have been farming this country for over 40,000 years. As a young Aboriginal farmer, I'm extremely proud that my family have been farming for this length of time. We have been breeding Bradford cattle for four generations. I'm driven to allowing my descendants to continue farming for another 40,000 years, and as such, I'm eager to use traditional Indigenous knowledge with new ideas to make this happen. And I help manage my family's sheep station near Broken Hill. The fragile, arid interior of Australia faces great challenges with a changing climate. And as such, I am dedicated to understanding how to best manage it in a sustainable manner. Josh and I are part of the next generation of Australian farmers. Farmers are adaptable. We're taking the best of what's gone before us and adding to it. Going to Paris was just one step on a long journey. And it is essential that young farmers are part of the experience. Now we're bringing back what we've learned to share ideas and bring back new solutions to mitigate climate change. This will involve connecting with government and investors to help protect the future for all of us. Getting to Paris was an extraordinary journey in itself. With a team of supportive people behind us, we put together a crowdfunding project. This involved building a media campaign, creating stories that journalists would take up, developing our profiles and helping people understand who we are and what we stand for and then keeping the momentum up via social media and face-to-face. -face. It blew my mind that complete strangers who had no connection with food or fibre production were actually donating to help us get to the conference. People want to find a way to contribute. So many people want to get involved, to engage with this issue in a meaningful way. Helping us get to Paris was a way for some people to do that. Even though the conference has ended, I am still receiving messages saying congratulations, well done and thank you. This kind of response is both highly rewarding and humbling. The whole experience was validation. People stepping up and saying, we believe in you. It's inspired both of us to want to live up to people's expectations. COP21 was an immense collection of highlights. Firstly, it was the opportunity to speak with farmers from all corners of the globe to learn about their production systems and future visions of these. What I love about farmers is that they are extremely hardworking, innovative, forward-thinking people. Give a farmer a pair of pliers and some wire and they can fix pretty much anything. Each day on the farm presents new challenges and with them comes new opportunities. I would like to work alongside farmers to help capture and enhance these opportunities. And this begins with opening the conversation and sharing ideas. Obviously, one of the other huge highlights was the outcome. 
After concerns that the Paris Agreement would turn out like the Copenhagen Summit, what was really inspiring was that over 195 countries came together and set an ambitious target to create real change for the future. Positive, je n'entends pas d'objection. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. During the conference, we heard so many stories of what is possible, as well as learning of the struggles communities are already having. It's only after learning of despair that we can appreciate where we are and get an understanding of what we can do to help create change. The number of people, countries and organisations that were represented at the conference means that there is a huge capacity for this change. We now know that we have a willingness as well. The media and government attention given to us as young farmers taking our story to Paris was quite incredible. I was particularly pleased with the coverage from city-based TV shows and newspapers that don't usually cover rural issues. Comments attached to these stories highlighted the widespread public support for both young farmers and farmers in general. We're the next generation of food producers and I see climate change is our greatest challenge. Going to the conference has opened up so many doors for us. Opportunities within the wider agricultural sector and also making connections with people and organisations that we'd never dreamed of partnering with before. Like a potential partnership with young farmers from Kenya and the possibility of building an information sharing system with African farmers. I am currently advising on climate appropriate agricultural practices for the World Bioenergy Association for a project in Khartoum, Sudan. In a region plagued by poverty and food insecurity, the development of biogas systems offers farmers a renewable energy source and impetus for agroforestry adoption. But of all the connections, it is those with farmers that I feel most privileged to have made. Although we come from vastly different backgrounds and we have different futures, there is something wonderful in speaking with another who cherishes the land and all life it supports as much as I do. The major highlights outside the conference were the Conference of Youth, which sat to the side of COP21. And the opportunity to visit the National Trust farming property in Northern Wales. Both these situations gave us further opportunities to meet farmers and young people, like ourselves, to learn and listen. Visiting the farm in Wales really taught me that community-led projects are critical for shaping government discussions and the way that they conduct business. This requires community connections, investors and then government, rather than the mandated top-down approach. It was inspiring to see how land managers on this property are thinking outside the square about how to protect the environment's natural beauty, provide a place to share stories from the past through heritage conservation, run a farm business, and help provide clean energy. Although each area requires special niche interests and knowledge, on the Welsh farm they understand the interconnectedness of the property's different aspects and assets, and as such, the importance of working together. I have been truly inspired to create something similar here in Australia, a zero emissions model farm in partnership with major car and tractor companies. There was an abundance of new possibilities and opportunities ahead for farmers across the globe. So Josh, with everything that you saw and learnt, where do you think we should go from here? I think this is really the hardest question. There's so many opportunities out there that we really need to start thinking about where we can create the most change. We need to start thinking in horizons and think about the short and the long term and identify different strategies to get there and then really chase hard after them. I agree. The opportunities for farmers and the agricultural community are immense. We're so lucky to be in a country with bountiful resources and assets and the possibility to harness these with our skills and knowledge. There is so much we can do, like reducing our emissions. In Wales we saw that they use their abundant resource, water, to produce hydroelectricity. One of the most exciting things that the farming community can reduce their emissions by is through the production of renewable energies. We are the sunniest and one of the windiest continents on Earth. And as such, the potential for solar and wind power is huge. Like this farm at Crookwell. Farmers have long fed and clothed the world. Now it is time we help power it as well. The opportunity for us to go to COP21 has really provided us with so much. Now it's our turn to bring this information back, share it and start building towards the solutions. 
We live in a world of brilliant minds, awe-inspiring technology and bountiful natural resources. With the right mind frame and long-term vision, we can create incredible solutions. There is already technology and practices applied on farming landscapes right around the world that's having a tremendous benefit for the community, the environment and the economy. COP21 highlighted the complexity of the changes needed and the necessity for many diverse and nuanced solutions. Arts is a means for social change, it's a very powerful force and it can really move people to action. The time to make a difference is now. We're up for it. Hopefully you are too.